These performers take dedication to a whole new level. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times the show had to go on. Some of you may have heard I was out yesterday with a touch of emergency appendectomy surgery. Yeah, appendix out, and I'm okay now. Fantastic, fantastic uh, surgeons, thank you to them. For this list, we're looking at unique entertainment-based events throughout history where well-known individuals have risen above personal injury or tragedy to give the public what they want. I, I didn't, at the time, I thought that was just horrible that I, I'd have to share my grief with so yes. many people, but I just found, you know, the love, the outpouring of love from the fans it was just overwhelming. We're including stories from film, TV, and music, but are excluding sports-related incidents like Michael Jordan's historic flu game, because that's a list for another day. Michael Jordan continues to blaze away, illness or not. What a play by Michael Jordan! Number 10. Can anybody play the drums? The Who. November 20th, 1973, the first concert on the American leg of the Quadrophenia Tour is a memorable date in the history of The Who. Why? Blissed out on a mixture of brandy and tranquilizers, Keith Moon passed out on his drum kit during the band's performance of Won't Get Fooled Again. Despite the fact that the song suddenly had no drum beat, the band continued to play. Having received an injection of cortisone, Moon returned to the stage only to pass out again soon after. Guitarist Pete Townsend then asked the crowd, can anybody play the drums? I mean somebody good. 19-year-old Scott Halpin took his chance and manned the kit for a three-song set. Number 9. Broken Ankle? No Problem. Jackie Chan. Martial arts action comedies don't get much better than when Jackie Chan is in the lead role. Don't ever make trouble here. I'll beat you up each time. While Rumble in the Bronx was a hit with fans and critics alike, that success came at a price for the leading man. In true Jackie Chan style, he performed his own stunts, including a scene which involved jumping from a bridge to a hovercraft. Despite landing awkwardly and subsequently breaking his ankle, the single shot was used in the final cut of the film. With much of the filming left, Chan refused to halt production and soldiered on, wearing a cast wrapped with a sock cleverly painted to resemble a sneaker. Number 8. Break a Leg, Dave Grohl I think I just broke my leg. The term break a leg was taken to a whole other level for Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl during a 2015 concert in Sweden. During the second song of the night, Grohl accidentally took a tumble and subsequently broke his leg. A concerned audience soon turned cheerful as Grohl made light of the situation by jokingly singing the David Bowie and Queen classic Under Pressure, and then promising that he would return after a small trip to the hospital. I'm gonna fix my leg, but then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna play for you again! For the next hour, the remaining Foo Fighters continued, with drummer Taylor Hawkins taking lead vocals. On crutches or in a chair, Grohl eventually returned to finish the show. Bad ass. <laughs> Number 7. Indiana Jones and the Case of the Traveler's Diarrhea – Harrison Ford during filming of the first installment of the Indiana Jones franchise, Harrison Ford contracted an unwanted case of dysentery. His illness meant that he was unable to be away from his trailer for more than 10 minutes or so at a time, for, well, toilet reasons. It's not the years, right? It's the mileage. The result of this was the iconic Arab swordsman fight scene, which saw Ford take care of business quickly by simply shooting his opponent rather than engaging in the planned duel. Not willing to let injury or sickness get in his way, he continued the trend in 1993's The Fugitive by refusing surgery after damaging ligaments in his leg. That's classic Harrison Ford for you. I told you it would be all right. <laughs> Number 6. Blood Boiled Up 
Leonardo DiCaprio. Boom, it happened, and then I opened my hand, and then blood starts pouring everywhere. And I saw Jamie go, yeah. like this, and Quentin, Quentin like had his hand, and then he goes. Leonardo DiCaprio has delivered several memorable performances throughout the years, and this moment is proof of his ability to create cinematic gold. In a scene where his character, Monsieur Calvin J. Candy, angrily realizes that guests of his estate have plotted against him, he slams his hand violently down on a dining room table. Hey! Don't lay your palm flat on that tabletop! If you lift those palms off that turtle shell tabletop, Mr. Pooch is gonna let loose with both barrels that sawed off. DiCaprio became so invested in the moment that he missed the table and slammed his hand right into a glass, slicing his skin open. Despite a heavily bleeding hand and the clear shock from fellow cast members, the camera kept rolling. And I can choose to do with my property whatever I so desire. DiCaprio stayed in character and used the bloody wound as an added dramatic element, further heightening the tension of the already intense scene. Gold! <laughs> to the man with the exceptional beard and his unexceptional Number five, courageously going live, Vanessa Hudgens. As a matter of fact, oh Sandy, what are you doing? Well, the time is right. A matter of hours before Vanessa Hudgens was due for a performance in the 2016 live adaptation of Grease, her father passed away due to cancer. Vowing to perform the show in his honor, she took the stage and nailed it. Hutchins excelled in her performance of Rizzo's famous emotional love ballad, There Are Worse Things I Could Do, which was a testament to her true ability as an entertainer and fighter. There are worse things I could do than go with the boy or two. Messages of support dominated social media, and rightly so because performing under those circumstances on television, let alone live television, was surely not easy. Look at me, I'm Sandra D. Lousy with virginity. Won't go to bed till I'm legally wed. I can't, I'm Sandra D. Number four, playing a concert just hours after his parents' deaths. Weird Al Yankovic. I'm the wanna be like on my knees day and night scoring points for the afterlife. Described as the most painful moment and day of his life, Weird Al Yankovic received the news of his parents' deaths only hours before he was due to take the stage for a show. Their accidental death due to carbon monoxide poisoning from their home fireplace left the comedic artist distraught, particularly as his relationship with them was incredibly strong. Yankovic is quoted as saying, Since my music helped many of my fans through tough times, maybe it would work for me as well, and grieved their loss by taking the stage. I was very close to my parents, and it's just the, the pain uh, and the grief is just indescribable, and it's, it's something that obviously I still live with to this day. Number three, Paul Walker's death before the end of production. The cast and crew of Furious 7. Hey, thought you could leave without saying goodbye. The world stopped to grieve when Paul Walker, a beloved staple of not only the cinematic universe, but also a well-loved humanitarian, died in a car accident in 2013. Although this loss of life took place during the filming of the seventh installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise, production continued with some script alterations and the redevelopment of his character. Similar in style to the completion of Gladiator after the death of Oliver Reed, Furious 7 used effective CGI, with his brothers Caleb and Cody Walker used as stand-ins. It was a combination of the emotionally rich filmmaking and the support of Walker's family, which saw not only to the completion of the film, but also to one of the most moving movie character send-offs in recent cinematic history. And you'll always be my brother. Number two, apocalyptic heart attack. Martin Sheen. During the making of the 1979 classic Apocalypse Now, Martin Sheen suddenly began to profusely sweat and experience devastating pains in his chest following a physically exhausting day of filming. Managing to scramble outside the cabin he was staying in, he struggled to keep his balance and was found a quarter of a mile away by a security guard. After receiving adequate medical attention, it was discovered that he'd had a heart attack. On the river, I thought that the minute I looked at him, I'd know what to do. 
but it didn't happen. Despite the vast health complications and having come face to face with potential death, he lived to not only tell the tale, but also to continue filming the movie, returning to the set just over a month later. Before we keep the show going with our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feel, and I'm happy again. Number one, the show must go on, Freddie Mercury. Inside my heart is breaking, my makeup may be flaking, but my smile. Considering that the one and only Freddie Mercury recorded the appropriately titled song, The Show Must Go On, despite chronic illness and his impending death from HIV AIDS complications, it's safe to say his dedication to Queen and to his fans was beyond courageous. Show must go on. Given that his illness was not publicly known at the time and that his health was quickly declining, no new footage for a music video was filmed. Instead, they put together a montage from their previous music videos. When it came time to actually record the tune, however, Mercury pulled through. He exclaimed, quote, I'll f***ing do it, darling, and downed a glass of vodka. The result was an utterly passionate vocal performance that he reportedly nailed in a single take. Do you agree with our list? Please sit down before you fall down. We can at least behave like civilized people. What do you think is the most impressive time that the show had to go on? You're all free. Oh, sweet home. <laughs> For more memorable top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.